Hello everyone, Avid Skill Model 77 back again with another reveal video. This will be on my Academy M3 Stuart Honey in 135th scale. Overall, there really isn't much, uh, much bad things about this kit. Not a lot of bad things at all. Um, it was made very nicely. Um, everything went together very well. Um, the only thing that was wrong were these track links. I'll get to that later in the video. Um, but as you can see, I did some weathering on here. I uh, scratched the decals up a little bit, which is something I really never thought I'd do. But I did it anyways because, well, I thought this would be a good uh, thing to test out some different techniques on. As you might have seen, I just knocked a, a shovel off the back of my Stuart. I'll glue that back on. Um, but yeah, I scratched the decals up a little bit. I made a wash using uh, some of those pastels that you scrape off with a razor. Um, Basically, I just uh, got a container, scratched some of the stuff off, some of the pastel dust on the, the container, put some water in there, and then put some soap in there and kind of make the pigment kind of mix in with the water. And it adds a really nice dust effect. I really like it. I also did some chipping and some scraping with my razor to get like a chip paint effect. Got some silver on there, made it look like there's silver poking through. Um, overall, I think it looks freaking awesome. You can see the dust effects on the turret, the top of it looks great. Um, so that's really cool, I thought. Um, on the back, um, you can see all the tools. There was a shovel right there. Um, I guess I'll show that to you guys. Right here. Um, I'll glue that back on after the video. Um, the machine gun I right hear. Um, the way I got this gunmetal effect is um, I took Model Master's gunmetal, which I don't really like because it's too it's too black. There's not enough metallic in there. Kind of looks like a gloss black, kind of lame. So I just took some silver and dry brushed on it, and I think it adds a nice effect. Also, a little small detail I put in there. I added an antenna. Um, originally it was supposed to be a, there was supposed to be a flag on there. I thought it would be pretty cool, so I made one on masking tape. It was supposed to go on the back, but it just didn't really work out. It was too heavy, so I just went without it. And, um, I still have a nice antenna. It looks pretty sweet, if you ask me. Also, I put a sledgehammer on the front. It doesn't say it in the instructions, but I thought it was badass. And also, this bag looks pretty badass, if you ask me. Um... It didn't say in the instructions to put it on, but I thought it looked pretty sweet, so I just painted it up with some Model Master leather, Model Master auto drive, and then some tester silver. And I just glued it on there with some uh, clear tacky glue. Um, and I really like it. Um, so yeah, basically I've been doing all these new weathering techniques, and I've, I've been having a blast with this thing. On the tow cables right here, I didn't attach this yet. Um, because I had to put the other track on and I only have one track because I left the others at my dad's so I have to wait another two weeks to get another track link if I didn't throw it away or if he didn't throw it away which would suck because if you saw my earlier videos you know that I did the individual track links as you can see they're a little shorter now and also in a lot more, a lot more pieces uh, because they, for some reason, when they dried, they got super rigid. I have no re no idea why. I only got the glue in the guide horns. It didn't slip into the, uh, the track itself and these ridges. But, I mean, they just snap in half like that. I mean, did you see how easy that was? Um, and the problem with that is, um, not only is it too hard to really do anything with, but also, none of these tracks really wanted to fit together correctly. It was like a little gap, so you had to pull it tight and try and get them to stick together. But if you do that, I mean, it's going to rip in like five different places, man. So, six hours of work down the drain right there. Um, kind of disappointed, but I said, whatever, that's just what happens sometimes, you know. So I just got a rubber band track right here. Um, and that's when I had even more problems. I swear to you guys, it's taken me about an hour to get that on there. Because, once again, it did not fit. Uh, the area down here, well, the two pieces, if they added, like, a, maybe another half a centimeter to the track, it would fit fine. But it was too short, the pegs were too flimsy, they didn't want to hold the piece together while I heated up my, uh, 
I raised it to kind of melt the pieces down. Um, so that ended up being a total disaster. So what I ended up doing was going online and seeing how they attached them. And what I saw was using staples. And it worked great. Um, it only took one. You can see it right there. Um, the tracks don't really line up very well, but again, the, it's gonna. I put it on the bottom, so when it's sitting down, you won't see it. Um, there is a gap right here where you can see like all the melted uh, plastic, well, the rubber band track. But you have like five to ten extra guide horns in the box that are left over. So if you glue a guide horn right in there, um, you shouldn't be able to see it. So really, not a big deal. Um, so yeah, like I said, I've, I had a blast with this kit. It was great. I'll definitely be getting more tank models. Hopefully a Tamiya. Uh, so that'll be pretty sweet. Um, I was going to say something. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Um, looking online yesterday to see some pictures on where the tow cable was placed. Um, because on the instruction booklet, it says they attach here and here. Okay. Um, I was a little confused because I'm like, it's not attaching to anything. The guy just put a tow cable on top of the tank. There's nothing holding it in. Um, so I didn't really get why the instructions did that. So I looked online and you attach them, they, you attach them here. Now a little trick with this is, I had, uh, these things right here glued into this piece that attaches to the tank. But you can't do that because this piece is solid. You can't slip it inside of there. So what you have to do is go ahead and attach this piece that attaches to the tank, but don't attach the uh, the U thing until after you get this in there and then glue it back on so you can get it on there. Um, but upon looking at tow cable stuff, I also found this amazing uh, website called clubhobby.com. I only saw one article, but the article I saw was the Bellman tank, this exact tank. And this research thing was so great, guys. Um, it goes in depth about what the color actually was, all the decals, and it was unbelievable, man. If you're going to build this tank, I encourage you to check that website out before you even start. Um, there should be a link to it later tonight, but if you just type in, like, empty Stewart in color, and then look at the links, it should say Club Hobby, the Bellman story or something. And he goes into detail about this color. He's saying that it was not blue. He doesn't know where the hell people got the blue from. It was, in fact, a slate gray mentioned in the paint guide on the instructions. The problem was on the box, it was, it's blue. So it's contradicting. So I really didn't know. Um, I looked online. I talked with Brett G. Um, he basically just said, do whatever color you want. I mean, who the hell cares? It's your model. So I went with the blue. I mean, it looks cool. But it was actually a slight gray. Also, he says the seal number is wrong. Um, the Bellman, um, it's on an olive drab background. And he also matched up these colors. Like, he took, like, a red and, like, made it into a black and white format or something. Some computer-generated thing and matched up the colors with the actual black and white photo. It was great, guys. It was freaking outstanding. So if you're going to build this tank, definitely check that out immediately. Um, that's about it. Since I'm, you know, finished with this tank, I just have to add the extra track link and glue the holes together. Um, I think I might take a break from modeling until the 23rd of August when the M-Build starts. Um, and go ahead and start on my storm rig. So, um, that will be pretty awesome. I can get this workbench clean. It's kind of a disaster. That being said, um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch y'all later very soon. Bye.